Hi, I'm Miss Fung and today we're going to look at expanding perfect squares. We're going to use the distributive law to expand these factors, that is x, x plus 3 and x plus 1. And when we expand, we can see that we multiply the x times x, we get x squared, then we get x and 3x and 3. And when we simplify, we add the x and the 3x to get 4x. What happens when the two factors are identical? So instead of having x plus 3 and x plus 1, what happens if we have x plus 3 and x plus 3? Or x plus 5 and x plus 5? Would there be a pattern? Let's have a look. If we have x plus 3 times x plus 3, we can see that the first term is still x squared, but the middle two terms, instead of them being different, they're going to be identical. So 3x and 3x. And the last term is 9. So we have x squared plus 3x plus 3x plus 9. So we obtain x squared plus 6x plus 9. So the middle two terms are the same and simplify to be 6x. What happens if we have x plus 5? Will that be the same scenario? Yes, indeed. So the middle two terms are identical again, so 5x and 5x. So instead of writing that middle line of working out, we can simply write x squared plus 2 times 5 times x, which is 10x, plus 25. Now this pattern did not work for that rectangle over there. It only worked when the shape is a square. And we call this pattern perfect squares. Let's write this out using pronumerals so we have a formula to memorize. So a plus b times a plus b would be a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. So whenever you get questions like x plus 3 times x plus 3, you no longer have to write all that working out. You can simply go to the last line, x squared plus 6x plus 9. And you do that by doing x squared and then 2 times x times 3, which is 6x, and then squaring the last term, 3 squared, which is 9. If that sounds a little bit confusing, you can always use brackets. This is a good trick if you're not very good at maths or if you're afraid of silly mistakes. Put the brackets in and all you have to do is put the a in the first two brackets and the b in the second two brackets. So for this question, I would have put x in the first two brackets and 3 in the second two brackets and then evaluate. Let's have a look at some examples. You can pause the video and try it yourself and then I'll pause to see if you've gotten the right answer. We can visualize the answer like so and double check that using the pattern gives us the same answer. So let's do that. Use the brackets and put x in the first two and 9 in the second two. Now let's evaluate this. We have x squared plus 2 times 9 is 18x plus 9 squared is 81 and that looks correct. Let's do that again, x plus 7 this time. So we have x in the first two brackets and 7 in the last two brackets. So we have x squared, 2 times 7 is 14x and 7 squared is 49. Another two examples. Remember, you can always pause the video and try it out yourself first and then unpause to check if you've gotten the right answers. Put the brackets, x in the first two brackets and 6 in the other two. Now we have x squared plus 2 times 6 is 12x and 6 squared is 36. Now this time we have a decimal. Again, same brackets and again x in the first two brackets and the other term half in the other two brackets. Doesn't matter if you want to use decimals or fractions. So we have x squared 2 times a half is 1 and a half squared is a quarter. What happens if you're given negative numbers? Now your first term is now x, but your second term is negative 6. So you can still evaluate it the same way and we get x squared plus 2 times minus 6 is minus 12x. And the last term negative times a negative is a positive. So we have x squared minus 12x and 6 squared is 36. So let's have a look at the formulas again. When we have both positive factors, we have a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. When we have both negative, we have a squared minus 2ab plus b squared. So the only difference is this minus over here. The middle terms are both negative. 
What is another way to write a square number? Instead of writing, for example, 5 times 5, you can write it as 5 squared. Instead of writing x times x, you can write it as x squared. So similarly, instead of writing a plus b times a plus b, you could write a plus b squared. And instead of writing a minus b times a minus b, you can write it as a minus b squared. So the formula that you'll see more commonly in textbooks are these ones over here, which mean the same thing. So memorize these. Here we have more examples. Pause the video and give these a go. Practice yourself and then unpause to see the solutions. For question 8, a is 4 and b is m. So 4 squared is 16 plus 2 times 4 is 8m plus m squared. Second one, this is like the first example, so you should be able to work it out. So we have x squared plus 2 times 3 times x is 6x plus 9. Next one, this time it has a negative, so it will be x squared minus 6x plus 9. This one, the first time is 3x, so now we have to do 3x squared, which is 9x squared. Use brackets, otherwise you might forget to square the 3. So 3x in the first bracket and minus 5 in the other, or just 5 if you have the negative there already. So now we have 9x squared minus 2 times 3 is 6 times 5 is 30x plus 25. Again, use brackets when there's a lot of numbers. So we have 5a as our a and 2b as our b's. So now we have 25a squared minus 2 is times 5 is 10 times 2 is minus 20ab and then 2b squared is 4b squared. And lastly, you can use a calculator for this one or you can try to do it in your head. 0.1 times 0.1 is 0.01x squared. 0.1 times 0.3 is 0.03 times 2 is 0.06x. That's our middle term. And lastly, 0.3 squared is, well, 3 times 3 is 9 and we have to move the decimal point twice. So 0.09. That's it from me today. Thank you for watching. Have a little bit more practice and I'll see you next time. Bye.